Russian Black Sea Fleet is a sitting duck for Ukraine. Ukraine said its weekend strikes on Russia's Black Sea Fleet were more successful than it previously disclosed, with damage to two additional vessels. Ukraine's navy said that it struck two of Russia's large landing ships, the Yamal and the Azov, in occupied Crimea in an attack last Saturday. But in an update on Tuesday, it said it also damaged two other ships, the spy ship Ivan Kors and the Konstantin Olshansky large landing ship. A Russian flotilla just announced by Moscow will be vulnerable to Ukrainian drones, which have wreaked havoc on Russia's Black Sea fleet, British defense officials said. The UK said last month that 25% of Russia's vessels in the Black Sea had been sunk, damaged or destroyed. This is despite Ukraine not having a functional navy of its own. The UK's defence minister said, after Ukraine's first updates about the attack, that the Black Sea Fleet was functionally inactive. In its update, the UK Ministry of Defence said that Russia wants to prevent Ukrainian forces from undertaking cross-river operations like the one which has established the bridgehead at Krinky, where both sides have lost large numbers of troops and equipment. The flotilla is likely to decouple river patrolling functions from the Black Sea Fleet, the British defence officials said. However, Russia's new flotilla could face the same fate as the vessels of Russia's prestigious fleet, which has been forced further east to Novorossiysk due to Ukrainian drone strikes, which have targeted vessels and infrastructure in and around Sevastopol. The Dnipro flotilla will likely be vulnerable to Ukrainian uncrewed surface vehicles, which have been effective in destroying Russian vessels operating in the Black Sea, said the update, which tends to emphasize Ukrainian gains and Russian losses. Russia knew about preparation for terrorist attack at least a month in advance. Ukraine. Russia knew about the preparation of a terrorist attack at the Crocus City Hall shopping center near Moscow for at least a month. But despite this, the Kremlin decided to allow the shooting of its citizens, according to the statement of the head of the defense intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Kirill Budinov. At least as of February the 15th, 2024, Russia knew about the preparation. I'll tell you more. This information passed through the intelligence group in Syria. That's where it went to Moscow. It's strange how everything materialized, said Budanov. He clarified that the Russians knew where the combat groups would come from and through which countries they would move to Russia. According to Budanov, there are several versions of why the Kremlin allowed the terrorist attack. The first is, as they usually do, towers fighting in Kremlin to now remove several officials. Another option is that they actually underestimated the scale of what would happen. They thought it would be more localized and wanted to blame Ukraine for everything the head of the defense intelligence believes. He reminded that the Russian authorities have already changed the version of what happened near Moscow three times in attempts to blame Ukraine for everything. In particular, there was a version from the head of the Russian Federal Security Service, Alexander Botnikov, who blamed Budanov himself. It's nonsense. By the way, if we touch on this painful issue, even though he's an enemy, I don't approve of terrorist acts against civilians in principle, he added. As Budanov emphasized, Russia sowed chaos itself, hoping to control it. There is such a persistent expression, even truth. It always works among special services. Everyone tries to create controlled chaos. Quite all more or less serious organizations tried to do this at different times. And the axiom is that none of them could make it controlled. The same thing happened here, he noted. Thank you.